we're back again recording non-monetary exchanges, this time without commercial substance. We're using the same information as previously for both green and blue corporation, but this time we're doing B, prepare the journal entries required to record the exchange for both companies assuming the exchange has no commercial substance. Remember from video 2 that this means that both companies remain in the same economic position after the exchange as they were in before the exchange. Let's start again with Green Corporation. We ask ourselves, what did they give up? Because this exchange has no commercial substance, we have to use the carrying value in order to record the exchange. So we don't use the fair value, we use the carrying value of the assets. Green Corporation's carrying value of the old equipment. This is calculated as original cost of 75000 Accumulated depreciation of 46875 Carrying value, 28125 We then add in the cash paid, $4,500. Why do we add in the cash paid? Because that is part of the total amount that this company had to give up in order to obtain the other equipment. What they gave up is equal to the value of the new equipment, 32625 Let's do the fair value check. We know we have to do a fair value check every single time. That's because whatever equipment you acquired cannot be valued at higher than its own fair value. We're going to compare the fair value of the equipment received. That information is available in the chart. $42,000. We compare it to the value that we want to record the new equipment at. And that's the value given up, which we just calculated as 32625 the value of the equipment given up, which is what we want to use to record it in Green Corporation, is less than that equipment's fair value. Therefore, no fair value adjustment is required. Let's do the entry. Remember, this entry is for Green Corporation. The new equipment is recorded at the carrying value given up, which we calculated as 32625 We then have to get rid of the accumulated depreciation from the old equipment. That's given to us in the chart as 46875 We have to record the fact that the old equipment is now gone, 75000 And finally, we have to record the cash that we gave up, 4500 Notice that because the transaction has no commercial substance, there is no change in the company's economic position before and after the exchange. How do I know this? Because there is no gain or loss. Why is there no gain or loss? because there is no change in the total assets the company has from before the exchange to after the exchange. The new equipment is recorded at the cost of what the company gave up, the cost of their old equipment, so no change is made in their economic position, meaning the total assets that are reported. This is true for two reasons. One, no commercial substance, and two, no fair value adjustment necessary. Let's now move on to Blue Corporation. We first have to calculate what did they give up. Because it's no commercial substance, we look at the carrying value of the old equipment, 49500 That's calculated as the original cost of 82500 less the accumulated depreciation of 33000 That leaves a carrying value of 49500 Now deduct the cash received. We deduct the cash received because it reduces what Blue Corporation gave up in order to obtain the new equipment. The company gave up $45,000 of value. Next, we of course have to do the fair value check. We take the carrying value of the equipment given up, $45,000. We compare it to the fair value of the equipment received, $37,500. That's from the chart. The fair value of the equipment received is less than the carrying value of what was given up. This means that the fair value rule applies. Blue Corporation can only record the new equipment at 37500 That's because the fair value of the asset received cannot be exceeded. Let's now do our entry. This entry, of course, is for Blue Corporation. The new equipment must be recorded at the maximum value it's permitted to be recorded at, which is $37,500. Now we've got to recognize that the company received cash, $4,500. Eliminate the accumulated depreciation of the old equipment, $33,000. Get rid of the old equipment, which no longer belongs on the books, $82,500. 
you'll notice that this entry doesn't balance. We have to record a loss on disposal, $7,500. Now we can calculate that as a plug, the number that is required in order to balance the entry, but we can also do a mathematical equation to determine it. If we take the value of the new equipment, 42000 wait a minute, why are we recording 42000 when we just put it on there as 37500 because we have to take the fair value maximum of 37500 plus the cash received, $4,500. That equals $42,000. Now, take away the carrying value of the old equipment given up, 49500 That, of course, is calculated as the original cost, 82500 less the accumulated depreciation, 33000 equal to 49500 Compare the two, and it calculates the loss on disposal, $7,500. Notice that when recording a non-monetary exchange without commercial substance, the fair value adjustment will only ever cause a loss on disposal, never a gain. A gain on disposal is only possible if the exchange is with commercial substance. Let's move on to Part C. What factors would have to be considered in order to determine if the transaction has commercial substance? If you watch video 2 in this series, you already know that transactions have commercial substance only if the company experiences a change in their economic position after the exchange compared to before the exchange. A change in economic position is due to one of two things. First, the amount, timing, or risk of the future cash inflows related to the new asset is different than the old asset which was given up. Or, the value of that particular part of the entity which gave up the asset is different after the exchange when compared to before the exchange. Notice it says that part of the entity. We don't look at the total corporation, but only that portion of the corporation that gave up the asset. See my video number two in this series for a more detailed explanation. Thank you so much for watching my video. In my next video, I'll analyze a non-monetary exchange which has more extensive fair value adjustments. That's so you'll get a better handle of when fair value adjustments are required. Thanks so much for watching.